Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for coming this afternoon to welcome to our the embodiment of the tea. Yeah, thank you very much for yeah, choosing us today. Um, oh. So as, as you most of you like, you know, uh, we are in a constant state of overload. We are overloaded by so much information and so many sensations. Today, so welcome to a break from your information overload. Actually, we're gonna, although we're gonna show, share with you some important information about matcha and tea, especially the history and health benefit, but our primary goal here today is to give you a break from all the productivity, uh, consumption, efficiency, those things are the cornerstone of our modern lifestyle. In fact, we want to help you tune out all the, all the macro sensation that you might have already had here in South by Southwest, or maybe from your daily busy life. Instead, help you tune into the subtle, small sensation that connect you to your internal system. So today, we're gonna use a matcha as a tool, and then we're gonna show you how to do it. And then hopefully you can do it when you go back home. So, yeah, here's our speaker today. I'm Eijiro Tsukada, uh, founder and the CEO of the Kuze Matcha. Kuze Matcha is a innovative at home matcha making machine that makes freshly ground matcha from scratch. I mean, from the organic shade grown leaves with just touch a button. With this system, you can easily drink matcha in your daily life quite easily. I'm gonna show you how to use this later. And also, I'm really honored to introduce my you know, colleagues, I mean speaker, who is unfortunately, unfortunately to come here today in Austin, but he is joining from Kyoto, the Shinkoin Temple. Takasan, can you join us? Hi, how are you, everybody? Today, you know, first, I'm gonna talk about myself, why I'm here today, why I started this matcha business, and why I try to you know, bring more matcha to more people, specifically in the state. That is the first part. And then I you know, asked him to take over the session, and then started with his introduction. And then next is you know, using this matcha machine, we're gonna make sparkly matcha. Today, we're gonna do a kind of you know, experiment that you know, using the, those you know, freshly ground sparkling matcha and using the, all your five senses to you know, taste you know, that you know, drink. And then followed by meditation, and hopefully I can you know, have a, some conversation with him why he invented this type of you know, um, tasting you know, method. And then, you know, he ended by, you know, taking a, you know, as many questions as possible. So, so first, you know, why I started this, you know, Kuzen Matcha. Yeah. So, like many, most of you, um, I was a huge, big coffee drinker. And a totally addicted coffee, and especially, um, I drank a total of eight or 10 cups a day. Yeah, really, serious coffee lover, but you know, Soon, he realized that you know I have some you know problem in town. Then I was very fortunate to do. Uh, I used to work for a big Japanese you know, beverage company where I was managing a big green tea brand. Where you know, especially in the 2012 and 15, I launched total of these you know, nice new product. Do you know what ingredients are common in this you know, product? All these, uh, you know, 
Cafe, cafe, yeah, cafe, yes, and then also, you know, this, you know, product all use this matcha. Matcha is really unique in terms of the taste and also the process. So matcha is the only green tea that you know you wanna eat everything. The rest of the tea you steep the you know tea leaf and you only drink the liquid, and then you throw away the rest of the leaf. Right? So the one uniqueness is the grinding by a meal. And then do you eat the entire the tea powder? The other thing is you know the entire tea garden cover for like uh, three weeks before harvest. So why it's shade? You want to have more erythianin. So green tea naturally has erythianin in the leaves. And the erythianin is the amino acid and which makes you relax. But you know, once it's exposed to the sunlight, sunlight changes those erythianin into catechin. And then erythianin the warming catechin in the you know, bitterness. So that sunlight changes the, the tea leaves to really, really bitter taste. So in, in order to have high quality, you know, much leaves has more erythianin. So in order to make that those you know, high quality leaves, you know, Japanese tea farmer invented a way to make the naturally have that those erythianin by shading the entire tea. Thanks to those, you know, erythianin, it makes you relax. At the same time, you know, tea has, you know, natural caffeine. I would say about half of the coffee. It is combined effect. You know, you see that you know, when you drink coffee, your caffeine pushes you up instantly, but you know, also digests it slowly. Ah, no, no, quickly. So that way, you, you're gonna need to have another cup of coffee. So another coffee, another coffee, another coffee. That is how I did about 10 years ago. But, you know, with the matcha, thanks to both of the, those, you know, combined effect, that Energy, yeah, no, not quickly, you know, a brief but I would say more sustained, more slower energy. So it's really interesting when I learned about matcha, I was managing the, those briefs uh, product. And then uh, samurai used to drink matcha before going to fight. And then, uh, you know, maybe they knew that the matcha is sustainable energy or not, but anyway, you know, that say goodbye to their friend. They took all the matcha yeah, before I go for my partner. So, mm. And also, you know, as I mentioned, matcha is something you're going to eat everything. So, you know, traditionally, the tea master ground those tea beef, you know, using the you know, stone milk into the fine powder, and then use those freshly ground matcha powder in the tea ceremony. And then, uh, which means that, you know, you're going to eat everything, right? So, in case of steeping the tea, you're gonna get only the liquid, and then you're gonna throw away the, the most of the unsolvable you know, nutrition that stays still in the leaves. But you know, in case of you know, matcha, you're gonna eat everything, no, no matter whether it's soluble or not soluble. So that's why I believe that you know, matcha should be organic. That's why we are sourcing only organic leaves from our you know, tea farmer in Kagoshima Prefecture. But unfortunately, I would say only three or four percent of the Japanese tea leaves are organic. The rest of the tea are non organic. And also because you know, but it's something you wanna eat everything. You know, it has a lot of you know antioxidants. You know, if you compare it with other you know, famous antioxidants, it's by far. So you know, learning everything, those matcha, I decide set my mission is to bring those you know, high quality authentic matcha experience, drinking experience to more people, especially outside Japan, specifically in the States, to provide the sustained energy. So actually, before starting this you know, Kuze matcha, I opened this you know, Sombre matcha cafe. Anybody know this cafe in San Francisco? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I really love this place. Yeah, it's a really nice place, and then, you know, not only the food and the drink are special, and then also it's nice atmosphere. I agree. Yeah, I want, to, I want to, you know, bring the, those, you know, nice, you know, authentic drinking matcha experience in San Francisco, so that's why I open the cafe. And each weekend, you know, 
it's so tough. And then, you know, we cover by many local media, and then also, yeah, you know, my strategy at the time was to establish a brand through the those, you know, tough experience. And then using the those brand, hopefully it can expand to PE business by introducing one cafe in across the state, or maybe, you know, uh, wholesaling the, our quality beefs to other, you know, restaurant cafe, or maybe introducing the e-commerce. So that is this company that I, I, I found by myself, but I raised most of the capital from the company I worked at the time. Even though the cafe was so successful, and then, you know, it seemed like everything should be good. Moving forward, good, but you know, instantly I was fired, so it's so sad, actually. So, just like you know, Steve Jobs said, how, I could, how could I get fired from the company I started? So, that is the same feeling that I had. And what would you do if you got fired from the company you started? There are also many, so many things that I could do at the time. Actually, so yeah, oh, oh, of course, I was totally devastated. So I do not know what I I I, I want to do from now. But you know, fortunately, I have a really long time friend. His name is Oki. He is a co-founder of this company. And then, uh, yeah, 25, 30 years ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I was really young at the time. And then uh, we went to the same you know college. And uh, since then, uh, we are a long, long time friend. And then, uh, I, you know, when we went to university, we met almost, almost every day, not every day, but you know, three times, four times a week. But, you know, when, you know, we graduated from university and uh, we, we haven't you know, met that much, but, you know, me came back to Japan, and he also came back to Japan. That was back in fall 2018. And then, you know, we start a lot of you know, discussion. And he took me a really beautiful tea growing area, Yame. Yame is a city name. Fukuoka is a prefecture in Japan. So this is kind of a really, you know, high quality tea producing area. Because, you know, he's from the area and his you know, family, relatives are running, you know, a tea farm and a tea company. And then, yeah, I, I was able to meet a lot of those, you know, people in tea industry. And then I soon realized that, that you know, tea Japanese, the tea making producing system in Japan was not sustainable at all. You know, even though we Japanese drink green tea now, but you know, by the home of the bottle green tea, we used to drink steep tea, where, you know, high quality beef are used. But you know, over the 30 years, especially I work for a big beverage company and then we, I promoted a lot, a lot of bottle green tea. And bottle green tea is really, you know, uh, easy to use and uh, really convenient. So that's why many people shifted from drinking loose beef tea to you know, bottle green tea. Which is good for consumers, but you know, not for, you know, Farmers, because you know the tea required for the bottle green tea is not always that high quality. Because drinking you know bottle green tea is you know more like a refreshment, right? and then just you know drinking water with some kind of a tea flavor, and not so not necessarily the high quality. Right? So because of the change of the those you know Japanese people you know consumption of tea, you know demand for the high quality leaf has dropped severely over the 30 years. And so as the price for the, those high quality beef has strong. And it's so difficult for, you know, those farmers who make, who used to make a really high quality beef, uh, you know, to sustain their business. So that's why, you know, those tea farmers, you know, get aging, and, but, you know, they don't want to succeed a business to his or her descendants because, you know, there is no future. In, in the tea growing. So, but you know, I knew that you know, because of the storm, I instantly understand that there is a huge demand, especially in the state, 
you know, if so long as I execute the high quality, you know, you know, TD uh, tea drinking experience, but of course with some, you know, easy to you know, easy to use or easy to convenience and important. So you know, I decided, okay, you know, I wanna cultivate a new you know demand for you know, high quality things outside the time. And by so doing, you know, I can sustain the, you know, those high quality leaves. And from the, those tea farmers who are still making high quality leaves, uh, I set, already set my passion that, uh, you know, to bring authentic matcha to more people in the globe. And, uh, you know, the, being fired from the company, I, you know, started was a really shocking experience. But, you know, because of my friend, he helped me, you know, and then uh, I really realized that you know, I really love what I'm doing. Okay, so, you know, let's, you know, start it from scratch once again. But, you know, I, I did not want to make another matcha cafe because I love, you know, stopping matcha. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, it's a competitor. So, this time, my strategy is, you know, yeah, of course, you know, in the matcha, we started the strong in matcha cafe or those you know, high quality matcha. Yeah, it's a nice quality. But you know, you got the need to go to the cafe. <laughs> so how how can you go to there? Right? So but you know, the, the business I was in charge for was a bottle matcha business. And uh, where you know key specialization were required, which killed the, all the fresh aroma and fresh taste and totally changed everything. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's really good quality. So I wanna have both high quality and also convenience. So, you know, I invented this system, you know, a Kuze Matcha. It consists of the machine and then also the leaves. I would say another type of the mass business, Matcha as a service. So we sell the machine and also the only, you know, sourcing the high quality woman leaves and then directly sell to customers. And we launched in the October 2020, and so far we have shipped about 3,000 units. And then we are able to build a really good customer. And then we are able to get the CES Innovation Award back in 2020. That, that was before, just before COVID. And then also the time best invention and also featured by a lot of media and then, you know, yeah, articles. And then most recently, Sean White, he just mentioned that he loved, you know, Kuze Matcha in his you know, video in the GQ Sports. So if you haven't checked yet, so he included the Kuze as one well of his 10 session things in his life. So yeah, please check it out. Now, finally, I'd like to welcome you know, Taka-san to you guys. Well, thank you so much, Ejiro-san. That's very inspiring story. <laughs> Then I actually my passion right now is 
studying about the notion of the self in different culture and also subjective well-being and meditation, uh, especially comparing the modern meditation, modern meditation, like such as mindfulness and also traditional meditation, different uh, traditions. But anyway, so talking about well-being, um, I actually have a complication with the David Dina, the David Dina, suddenly he passed away last year. Uh, he was one of the giants in the well-being field. Uh, he, um, so the Gallops gathered the data uh, under his uh, instruction, uh, uh, guidance, uh, that used those data to make uh, World Happiness Report uh, issued by uh, United Nations. As, as many people know. Uh, so we looked at those data, but uh, uh, we found out that that data is not uh, what questioner to uh, correct data is not really inclusive uh, to the many culture, but meaning is more questioners. Definition of uh, subject will be was more focused on uh, Western culture, mainly Western Europe and North America. So we want to create more inclusive uh, questionnaires for a different culture to actually more accurately measure different notions of well-being. And then I found out that the uh, notion of self really influences uh, the notion of subjective well-being, or actually the impact on the subject of well-being as well in a different culture too. So, that's why we actually wanted to focus on something like, you know, this tea, because tea ceremony, in a way, is how to connect with people, but also meditation part, because uh, well-being become more popular, uh, and also meditation become more popular, to, you know, at the same time as well. But as you see that on the screen, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You probably heard this expression many times, when people talk about mindfulness, uh, in a way that um, modern mindfulness is just focused on the meditation only, uh, not really deep into the philosophies and cultures or even daily life. So especially it kind of feels like the word is like Columbus in a way, <laughs> probably you heard about the whole word people as well, um, or like trying to fit into the um, more affluent white society, and it's what I felt like that. But anyway, so that's why I started to you know more research about how the self and well-being and meditation can be combined to actually uh, increase the subject of well-being in different cultures. But you can see the next slide here. And then, so this is work, you know, you often see today individuals, right? Uh, individual uniqueness, diversity, all kind of word you hear that. Uh, then especially this word here is key, what concept of individual today is key for like impersonal syndrome. Uh, impersonal syndrome is like somebody that feel like they're, they achieve something that not because of their skills or their own effort feels like they're not relying on the luck or other people's effort too much. So they feel less confident. But why is that you look at this word here? Individual. Uh, so it's a you know, Latin root. So in is negative, right? Then individuals means dividing. So what does an individual mean? Is you are dividing yourself from the others. But the other means it's not just about you know, other humans, uh, other elements luck, conditions. So in order to actually be yourself as an individual, you need to cut off the old connections with others. So that's why you can see the things more holistically or maybe more like you can see the objective view. So in a way that this is also based on modern science as well. But you know like like an impersonal syndrome, like symbolizing an impersonal syndrome, people cut up all so, so many connections that they don't feel like they are human anymore. 
words, they don't feel like they don't exist. The, but this part is because I live an individual unique and of all the connection, but that's why it's not, not what the nature has a way it's humans are more interdependent being. Like, you know, maybe like you can see that, for instance, uh, this is famous as a riddle, uh, 100, sound of 100 clap, right? So, you make a sound like this when you clap your hand, right? So humans are like a sound in this case. But just one hand, you can make a sound. You need to have a two to make a sound that's you. So the, this case here, once again, that, you know, a tea culture establishing Japan is a really great way to learn about what the original human beings are, what we are as a way it is. So you can see the next slide. And tea and the connectedness. I mean, Japanese tea culture, mainly like today, we're talking about manja, uh, those cultures actually came to Japan in the early 13th century. But even earlier time, like 9th century, like a Chinese Tang Dynasty, back then, actually tea came to Japan once as well, but didn't really uh, emerge into Japanese culture because. Uh, but then was more consumed as a medicine. And actually, some of the example is, uh, you can kind of see in uh, some of the Central Asian tribe how they consume tea today, like with the salt, or uh, make a tea with milk, and the, the spices. Uh, then, then you boil the tea, you know, in a uh, such kind of hot milk or hot water to infuse it in the medicines. Uh, that's the kind of original form of tea, but uh, 13th century, like kind of like Song Dynasty, actually pedigree, he was invented, and that came to Japan. And at that moment, there's no salt, but not any like uh, spices uh, added into the tea. And then actually, during the Ming Dynasty, steak tea was invented in China, then they came to Japan, then steak tea became really popular too. But, Japanese cultures, in Japanese culture, when we talk about tea culture, it's more of a matcha green tea originary. And the match actually, you know, match culture evolved in the gentle environment. Then also, that environment eventually became a tea ceremony, the way of tea. Then tea ceremony, of course, you know, five, uh, this case here, we rely on five senses to connect it to each other in tiny tea house. But in this case, it's not a much of a visual connection. I mean, today we are, for instance, you know, many occasions, like today as well, I'm actually attending a conference like this one through the Zoom. But, um, like today's case, if you want to just pass the information, mainly like you focus on the visuals and the audio information, this is enough. But human connections more than that. Being in some space with other people is not just a visual information, just exchange the visual or audio information. So you need to use your five senses fully, even like touching, smelling, and in what this case is tasting as well. So that's why we kind of invent that age around me making um, this five senses tea tasting. Right, so now he can make a tea, demonstrate how to make a tea in front of you. From now, I'm gonna make a, you know, sparkly matcha using this Kuzen matcha system. And then during the time I make the matcha, we're gonna serve you all this sparkly matcha. And then followed by, we're gonna have the, you know, five senses tea tasting and a meditation. So, using the Kuzen matcha system is so simple. And as I explained, you know, our matcha starts with these leaves, and then inside of these two, we have a ceramic milk here. And then, you can choose the strength, so single, one, half, or double, just some of the single, and the push button. 
and then it starts grinding the leaves into freshly ground matcha powder. You see that, you know, freshly ground matcha powder is gradually coming out into the cup, where it's whisking in the cup. So the cup has, you know, this whisk, and this whisk has magnet, and another magnet under the stage is rotated. So as the magnet rotates, this whisk also rotates. So basically, it's a, make a shot of fresh regular matcha from the leaves. And while the, you know, matcha maker is making a shot of matcha, you're going to need to prepare some, you know, drinks. This time, we're going to use the uh, sparkling matcha. So if you have this, you know, soda stream or any other, you know, devices, You just need to make some you know, drinks. And then pour the you know, grains into your cup. Until you know, your matcha is ready. So as it you know, grind out those you know, freshly ground things, so it smells really freshly nice in aroma. It's coming out. Yeah, enjoy the you know all the those you know, color changing aspect and also the you know those the aroma you know, aspect. And then simply pour the this you know, matcha shop. Like this. And then you you can make your matcha to make quite easily. So if you want to drink the matcha latte. You know, just, just simply have a glass of milk and then pour the matcha shop and then it's going to be instantly matcha latte. Or uh, I really like this sparkling matcha. Okay, so let's move to the next section. Okay, so now everyone has, you know, each of their sparkling matcha. We can start. Same water roots as breathing. Well, 
blood is circulating in many lung itches. Most of the Kurds say we think that's what we exist, but way before that, when people wanted to acknowledge their existence, they, when they want to feel they are there, they simply pay attention to their breathing. So maybe the breathing was the first thing to feel being yourself. So right now, there's the challenging breathing. Yeah, we're 
these days, we sometimes I can see that oh much is good for us. So people kind of just drink it and watch it.
experiment and observation. So, community and place fields, make hands feel right, must be a character, throat, stomach, squeeze the light. Just take a short moment to see what you're feeling and what you are thinking after this tasting. This one again, the important part is not just during this doing this tasting. Uh, that's like a, actually can say as a mind body in a way. But the important part of the like uh, Pedro was explaining the session. Um, so tea kind of a prolonged effect, right? Um, so kind of pay attention to yourself. Stomach feel, that your awakeness feel, you know, how your awakeness or something like that. Uh, even hour after you drink tea or something like that. Um, and especially around at 3 o'clock. So, uh, based on, unless you're traveling from different, you know, time zone, uh, normally the circadian reason wise, you can a little bit down here right now. Just before you go to sing it out. But the tea is actually kind of perfect. Having tea at this moment is kind of perfect way to um, see how this circadian rhythm, especially this coming back, back apart, feels like. But how the tea impacts you. The, instead of then even coffee, how that impacts you. Um, so, it kind of feels like, you know, my whole eating today is just focus on how you drink, how you eat. But a really important part, like this, especially like a tea like this one, is, of course, during, you know, taking a moment like this in your everyday life, you know, spending some time to make a tea or drink tea like this, but I think that's important too, but at the same time, uh, kind of, you know, occasionally observing your so I ate this, I drank drink this, drank this. How does that impact you through a day? You know? uh, so that's actually an idea about this uh, five cents matcha tasting as well. So I assume that uh, in Asia you can add some question or comment to the... Yeah, how are you guys feeling now? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're now refreshed. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I needed a quiet break. Because I've been here since Friday, just going to sessions over and over. Uh -huh. And so I think this is the first time we're actually to the minute to just have a pause. Yeah,
be so busy. <laughs> that is so much, you know, husband. Yeah. Same. I mean, you know, normally we don't have time to focus on this tiny, you know, subtle things in our daily life. And just focus on this thing, and uh, by doing so, you're going to forget everything. By you, any comments or yeah? Uh, is the experience different if the water is sparkling, like let's say if we have boiling water, like hot water? I think so. Yeah, definitely yes. Yeah, the, especially the reason choosing for the sparkly matcha today is you know sparkly. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, of course, if you use the hot matcha, you know, of course the taste is different, and also how your body you know feel the you know liquid is totally different. So. You can enjoy how you know this uh, difference. Yeah. So I have a basic question to Takasan. Yeah, I call it Takasan. So why did you, how can I say, develop or try to promote this you no know, five senses tea tasting you know, to more people? And why we are introducing this idea to Southwest? Southwest? This time, we have any so what, what idea is once again that you know, uh, due to COVID, everything moved to online, and then why do you do an online conference? I mean, like <laughs> this one right now, exactly. Uh, this is a skill like I'm just giving you information, but just the information. I mean, for instance, if you're reading books. Or if you go to some online and then just reading some articles, or you go to YouTube. Today, you just go to YouTube, or you know, you just go online. You can get any information, any like knowledge. So, and then for instance, like ancient Greek time, they made a hierarchy. They ranked the five senses. Top one is the visual, and the second one is the audio. Because those are related to the words. So that means related to logic, right? All about thinking. But like a touch, touching or smelling or tasting was considered as, oh, the same as an animal. So it's not the human life thing. But as you see, so right now, especially in the United States, you, have, you start having more, you started having more in person session time. When you actually in person session, it's so different from just doing this online things. Um, you feel many things, you experience so many things. Um, probably you don't actually, those, it most of the influence doesn't come up to um, your conscious level. But those things are important. Like some of that scholar, like, uh, Timothy Wilson, Timothy Wilson from the University of Virginia mentioned uh, we, can pro uh, we can process about 11 million pieces of information at once under the conscious level. So actually below the conscious level, so you actually don't already notice it. But conscious level, you can only process about 40 pieces of information. But those things that you don't consciously acknowledge, those are also important part of your experience. And paying attention to subtle things, especially if you think about today, uh, we are attracted to the strong stimuli, um, like coffee, and then coffee is not strong enough, so we actually study drinking energy drink. And then we we'll keep looking for the stronger, stronger energy drinks as well. And also, if you can think about information, stronger information, well, stronger stimuli coming from the information, normally coming from the information of a clear black and white. But also, uh, information gives you, give you simple causality. Like if you do A, you get B. Like today's well-being, I have an issue is people say, oh, you do this, you can get happy. You can increase your well-being, something like that. 
uh, those simple information uh, will feel much stronger, stimulus, like jolt, like things. So that's why we're more attractive to. But uh, there's a good title called "Don't look at black and white, look at gray." <laughs> but uh, gray, like unsettling or unclear information. It's not just black and white. It's gray. Gray is hard to see. It's like also doesn't give you a jolt. Again, 
like when you put your hand, the sound, like a sound, this is a us. Not just, you know, the sound itself exists itself, but with both hands and the air vibration, all kind of things necessary. Also, in order to the, this air vibration become sound, somebody needed a bad ear drums as well. Um, so, it's so many things is actually kind of creating your existence. You know, today is such a division. Um, like worrying trains, uh, all kind of thing happening because we so focus on ourselves, we versus they, but it's all interdependent. So, and also like it's disease. Those things as well, you need to actually understand how we are connected to the other, but the other including not just human, but you know, other things. So, um, so that part, I think that just change small behavior in everyday life. But I cannot say that this one definitely, or at least everybody's not drinking matcha can, maybe, you know, we can achieve SDGs at every goal, or uh, make it happy, or uh, we can eliminate the words. We cannot, probably, maybe matcha cannot do that, but slow things, you know, maybe something like an indirect. You should pay attention to how you drink tea every day. Just take it like a five minutes or ten minutes. Uh, drink like this, they actually probably start creating kind of chain reactions. And then when you actually start paying attention to small things, it's not like, you know, I tell you that you become like this, like that, but kind of curiosity, you know, oh, you become more curious about, okay, I start paying attention to drinking tea like this. What's going to happen to me? The be curious, like that's actually kind of science in a way too. Uh, that's like the reason why I mentioned about meditation is like more, this is more experiment and also observation. Uh, instead of people say, "Oh, my you drink matcha, you become healthier," so I'm drinking, and that's you can already see the answer there. So, but this is here. How that change? Curious about beyond that. Um, I think we need to have such kind of mentality because, uh, well, the COVID is a good example because we didn't know what's going on. <laughs> and change all the value we had or all the norm we had. So now is that everybody have a different answer, different perspective, but it's not like a who's right, who's wrong. It's really about be curious about what's going to happen next. If I do this, if we do that, what's going to happen next? I think that's going to approach very important. Any comments, opinion, teacher or Yeah, so my takeaway for through this, you know, uh, five senses tea tasting is you know, by doing this, you know, I can focus on the really subtle things. And then by doing so, I believe that I can keep my senses the king, so I, my sensation is king, so that, you know, in order to, you know, react all the tiny things. Right? Otherwise, you know, you, you know, if you are, your condition is not good enough, I don't think you can react to those all the tiny things, tiny stimuli. And so, you know, you know, you know this helped me, keep me a really good condition, and uh, you know, as Takasa mentioned, that nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. So, you know, what, what I can do is prepare myself, I mean, be, uh, to try to be, you know, in the good condition as much as possible. And uh, hopefully, this kind of practice, practice really help. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course, I don't have, normally don't have enough time to do this, you know. Early morning, I just you know drink this matcha and drink straight and then you know to go. But you know, sometimes at least once a day, yeah.
try to have this kind of thing and then you know relax and then you know talk to your you know body and your senses. Yeah. So I think we have some time and then yeah, ten minutes. So we can have some question or comment or anything. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the leaf, okay. We are sourcing from uh, you know, Kirishima city in Kagoshima. Kirishima city, Kagoshima prefecture in the south part of Japan. So, yeah, we work with the organic team. They grow really, really high chemicals. Yeah, um, you know, uh, if you look at the uh, Years ago, when Saint Norikyu started the tea ceremony, tea master used the you know, matcha leaves or tencha in Japanese, and the tea master ground the leaves using the stone mill into you know freshly ground matcha powder. It's a part of the preparation and the operation to the guest, and they use all the you know, freshly ground matcha. Yeah, because it took uh, some time. I mean, the one big you know stone mill can produce only. 30 gram or 40 gram per hour, meaning only 10 servings or 20 servings. So, you know, they, they got to be to, you know, keep it all, in, all, over, all over the, yeah, all. So, that's why, you know, now, most of the matcha available in the market is pretty gram. And then, pretty gram by the tea company in Japan. But, you know, I think that we are the only company so far, you know, by building a direct relationship with the tea farmer. And it's also in the easy you know, tea leaf, and then same for coffee. Brazil one is really simply best. Yes. No. The flavor is so different. Yeah, very really different. I've, uh, I've had the Ito and mm -hmm. you know, ground matcha. Mm -hmm. This this tastes you know, very different. Yeah. So yeah, I wanna change it. You know? <laughs> because you know, 500 years ago, yeah. they did the same exactly the same way as we. Oh, so you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't have machine. But you know, we are you know, you know, doing the basics. I mean, they grow much organically, organically. Right? Now, at that time, there is no pesticide, no chemical. But now, most of tea farmers use those chemical, and the tea company, you know, pretty ground. So why? <laughs> Just you know, focusing on the organic and then you know, fresh ground. You know, that is the basics. I believe the matches. That's why I think it, but in, in the different you know, design. Different settings. Okay. Yeah. A lot of green teas have matcha in them. Are there green tea brands that you recommend that have better matcha than other matchas? Like, obviously, the matcha word comes from and the type of matcha matters. Are there green teas that are better than others? I think your question is about. Like, brands of tea that have matcha in it? A lot of green tea has matcha. A lot of green tea brand has matcha, yes. So I'm wondering if there's brands that have. Uh, so yeah, the, I would say you know yeah of course our matcha is the best in town the freshly ground you know we are the only freshly ground matcha but normally you know higher quality matcha has more LCN and uh, you know meaning less bitterness you know? and then higher quality matcha its color is really bright green really beautiful color and if your matcha color is yellow or yeah. Yellow green or you know dark or you know brown green that it's it says that it's not a good so yeah you can judge from the taste and also the color. Yeah. Uh, does the machine have the ability to do I know it's either sparkling or still mm -hmm. cold water but can you make hot matcha? Uh, so you can use the warm water in this you know this whiskey cup but you know this machine does not have the you know uh, heating functionality. Yeah. The temperature you get, you're gonna, yeah, you use, you're gonna get. But you know, one thing I have to highlight is that you shouldn't use the really hot boiling water because you know it's any uh, steam that can go into the ceramic oven. So we have the ceramic oven here, so we need to avoid the moisture you know, leaking into the oven. Yeah. Can you talk more about the importance of L-theanine? 
importance of L-theanine. So L-theanine is the amino acid, and the, you know, which, if you take the end L-theanine, which makes you relax. And then the graph I show you is, you know, much naturally contain both L-theanine and then, you know, caffeine. And the higher quality, you know, matcha contain more L-theanine because, you know, um, higher quality means specifically it's a spring harvest. And the spring harvest, you know, tea leaves can absorb the, all the L-theanine from the last autumn to the spring. So it's about six months. During the time, the tea plant absorb the, those L-theanine from the soil through the root into their leaves. And then, you know, there are a couple of, you know, harvest season, spring harvest, summer harvest, and autumn harvest. And the summer harvest one, you know, they can accumulate those L-theanine only from the, you know, the time of the spring harvest until the next you know, summer harvest. The time is shorter than you know, spring harvest. So that why, you know, spring harvest one is, you know, more deserting and can be regarded like you know, higher quality. And it's a taste with umami, so it's less bitterness. And then also, you know, it makes you relax. And another study showed that, you know, the Japanese people who live in Kyushu Island, and it's a, you know, big you know, study. And those people who, you know, consume the regularly the green tea, specifically higher quality matcha, I mean the l they have a really low tendency of getting a type 2 diabetes, which means that, you know, type, T, type 2 diabetes can, you know, inc increase a lot of, you know, pro probability of the getting the Alzheimer's or those, you know, effects. Right? So, actually, I work for a big company who support, that company support all the, those studies in the area, and then uh, Ito and Data Santori did, and then, uh, you know, yeah, so I think the l is really, you know, good for you, but, you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, take it and then you get, no, no, it's, I would say more, you know, subtle effect, I would say more, you know, yeah, correlations, but, you know, I believe that, so long as you, you drink it regularly, I think it's really good for you. Yeah. Thank you. So 
in a way that you know, do the experiment and observation. So that's an idea. Okay, 5 p.m. So I think we are closing now. But if you have still some question, yeah, I'll be here, and then yeah, Takasa will be here as well. So you know, yeah, please you know, you know come to a booth. And then one machine, one machine machine here, and another one is there. So if you want to try, yeah, yeah, please let us know. So, yeah. Thank you very much for coming to our event. And sorry about. <laughs>